Hello and welcome to this um, Goddess, Asteroid and Gene Keys uh, weekly podcast. So we're going to be covering this week um, a few interesting things that are happening with the Goddess Asteroids. Um, so I'm going to firstly be looking at um, Ceres is in a conjunction with the South Node at the moment and the Moon today. Um, this is in Gene Key uh, 16. So I'm on the 30th of August today, um, looking at, at the sort of week ahead. And we're going to be talking about another really interesting ast asteroid called Ashira who is the mother of God. <laughs> so you probably never heard of her. That's why we're going to be talking about her today. Okay, we're going to be talking also about Astraea, who is um, a goddess of the golden age energies. She's a sacred artist. And she is um, in a run up to crossing the galactic center. Um, then we've also got um, a, a trio of Sun, Hygieia and Mars in Virgo, crossing three different gene keys. And we also have Venus and Vesta the Priestess in gene key 57 at the moment. So that's everything we're going to cover today. Um, Okay, so let's begin with um, series. I'm going to just screen share here the chart so you can see what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, uh, let's pick up a little pen here, a little spotlight. So this is what I'm talking about here. We have um, Ceres, the mother goddess. She was the first goddess asteroid to be discovered and she's been moving with this um, north node actually for quite a while now. I might have said south node earlier but it's a north node which is karmically where the energy at the moment flows from the south node here um, in with Juno which I've talked about in previous weeks. So I'm not going to talk about that too much at the moment, the alchemical marriage. But what we have today um, is we have the moon joining them. So we have six, seven, nine, some, some nice numerology there. And uh, in my previous weeks, as I've been talking um, about the North Node and Ceres, I've been talking firstly about our personal attachment to our mother and how that really shapes all our um, neuro patterning and, and our communication and relating with others. These are really fundamental things that if you're struggling with communication and relationships in your life, you might want to take that right back to its origin in attachment to your mother. And then last week I talked about um, our attachment to the earth as mother. And I talked quite a lot about mushrooms, actually. So, <laughs> so go back to that one if you're interested in those two. They're still very relevant because um, Ceres is still there with the North Node. And what I felt drawn to talk about this week is, uh, we'll say, the Cosmic Mother. Um, and when I sort of tuned into that, you know, what is it that wants to be expressed at this time? And a few weeks ago, my dear friend and colleague, Midi Berry, um, told me about an asteroid called Ashira, um, who is the wife of God. So I looked up Ashira, um, and she is actually a really important part of the zodiac right now. Um, this is zero degrees Aries. So this is the spring equinox point. 
you know, it's um, there are these four points that mark the equinoxes. Um, I believe this is the vessel of love in human design. And so uh, she's also in Jinky 25, line two, which is universal love in that line two of relationship. So it feels like she's really call, calling and actually what's amazing is if we look opposite her, we see that today Mercury is exactly opposite in another um, autumn equinox, depending whether you're south or north. If you're in the northern hemisphere, this is the northern, um, this is the autumn equinox point here where Mercury is. So... For me, Shira is wanting to be spoken about, so I'm very glad to oblige Shira. Um, she is uh, a goddess uh, asteroid, um, and she's representing something that has been really hidden, rejected, and, and squashed down. And this is the idea that God had a wife. In the Canaanite religion, you know, the, there's three major religions that come from the Middle East, which are Judaism, the Muslim religion and Christianity. But it's absolutely, you know, the foundation of Judaism and Christianity come from this Canaanite religion, which has essentially um, written out Asherah. Um, a long, 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 long time ago, to the extent that if you have heard of her, you probably think that she's evil, uh, but mostly people won't even know about her. But she is there in archaeological and historical records. And what is actually great in these times is a lot of archaeologists are really interested in this stuff. And so they're put, putting the picture right. Um, you know, we're becoming aware that in early Christianity, um, for example, women played, uh, played a really important role in that time. So we have Jesus and Mary Magdalene, in a way, is a reflection of God and um, an Asherah, El and Asherah, um, as he would have been called then, or Yahweh. So we're talking about, um, you know, a primal mother energy. And what's really been coming to me in these last few days is the importance of this in alchemy. If you're interested in astrology, if you're interested in um, the gene keys, human design, the Mayan dream spell, all of these systems are actually built on the I Ching, which is made up of male and female hexagrams. So if you literally took out all the yin female hexagrams, you know, <laughs> we would not exist. You know, the whole universe is built on this um, combinations of yin and yang energies working together. So when you do things like you repress, take out a Shira, you take out Mary Magdalene, you know, you repress the divine feminine and this is also then becomes reflected in the repression of indigenous peoples around the world who represent this yin wisdom then you get a massive distortion and so when people talk about the patriarchy and the problems it's caused you know it's brought us to the edge of environmental disaster then we start to see how the wheel is turning. And I feel this is an important point, actually, because Ashira is starting a new cycle of the zodiac as she's at zero Aries. So she's speaking today um, and she's saying, I'm beginning a new cycle. I'm beginning a more visible cycle. And what my seed energy here is, is universal love. 
and this is what the divine feminine um, brings to us is this and i feel this is um you know this is also what uh, the Moon series and North Node is powerfully pushing us towards, in, in this moment in time, um, towards the Divine Feminine. So maybe you're hear, he, hearing that calling. I had a friend contact me last night who's going to, um, she's a singer, and she was saying, I want to align my concerts with the Divine Feminine. So... <laughs> Um, yeah, so that is perfect. And I'm sure that, um, you know, maybe in your way, and I'd be really interested to hear of your experience of, you know, how are you feeling this um, divine feminine calling in your life? Okay, so let's move on. And uh, we're going to look now at Astraea. And a question kind of came into my mind um, a couple of weeks ago about what is a golden age? You know, I've been talking since 2017, actually, when Astraea, Juno and Hygieia, who's a goddess of healing, they crossed the galactic center together. It was January 2017, and they actually stayed together for about a year and a half. And I had this amazing vision of them seeding this holy grail, um, golden age energies. But what do I mean by that? And, um, you know, the whole thing, I think, with the golden age is you don't really know what's coming. And it's not in human hands either. <laughs> you know, these are these huge moments in time where things change and you know where I live here for example there's all these mills that s stick out in Yorkshire and this was the center of the industrial revolution once and now it's now it's a kind of really reinvented itself as a creative town called Hebden Bridge and then you kind of look at the jungles in South America and you see these incredible pyramids or you look at ancient Egypt and and you think where did these civilizations go you know the the might of the Rome Rome colonizing the whole world um, Genghis Khan colonizing the world and then you know from having this immense power suddenly everything shifts and um, I think we need to be kind of firstly humble as human beings in this whole golden age question that we have any power or control over it at all but i do believe through understanding these the energies of goddess asteroids like astraea that we can align ourselves more closely with these energies so for me there's there's two things that have really stood out with Australia. One is the sensitization of the human being, the human body. Um, for me, that's been a lot around food, um, what I'm willing to eat and drink. And I think you can see that reflected in the world, you know, that there's a lot more consciousness around food and people wanting good quality food and and not wanting to eat industrial type of food that is essentially dead <laughs> you know so it's not very good for us and it's giving us cancer loads of obesity loads of other illnesses so um that's just one example another example is um emotions you know the feeling of emotions it's like we're um we're waking up to our full sense of feelings as human beings and i think the film uh, my octopus teacher on netflix if you haven't seen it it's such a incredible film that shows somebody's journey, this man, through his relationship with this octopus. And you kind of see him change. And this is what I 
perceive that the energies of Australia flowing in through the neutrinos are are doing to our DNA. You know, they're awakening these codes within ourselves. So this is in Jean Key 11 line one today. She's at 23 degrees of Sagittarius. Here's my little pointer here. Um, and so she's lying at the moment between what's called the galactic attractor, which is around 14 degrees Sagittarius. And then she's going to reach the um, she's going to reach 26 degrees Sagittarius, which um, 26, 27 is um, it's what I feel is the galactic center. Some people may have narrowed that down. But when things cross the galactic center, it's like they're beaming in their energy in a big way. As I say, the, the first time I connected with Australia, she was actually crossing the galactic center. So I'm feeling like we're going to get this huge download. Um, uh, it's going to get be at its pinnacle around, you know, about the 18th to maybe the 21st of September as it crosses the galactic center. So look out for that. And this beautiful Jean Key, um, whose city is light, you know, and this is what the golden age is all about. It's about light awakening right within our DNA. So it's not about what's happening out there necessarily. It's about what's happening in our DNA. Um, and I mentioned the sacred artist before, you know, and this could be anything, could be writing, music, art. And, and what the sacred artist does is they pull in this beautiful healing energy. Um, and sometimes it might not be beautiful to look at, but there's a beauty in the process of transmuting suffering through art so it could also be that but basically you know there's a sacred intention within the artist that marks um what i feel whether straya is is kind of part of that energy field or not um, and that may be you know unconscious for many people many people are sacred artists who know nothing about Australia. <laughs> And that's the way it should be. Uh, but if you're watching this, it's probably because you love astrology like me. So you like to know exactly what all these things are about. OK, so let's move on now. We're going to go to the into Virgo now. Um, let's go down a little bit. So, um, yeah, this is really interesting that we have here, um, we have the sun today is transiting um, Gene Key 40, uh, which is divine will and surrender. Um, then we have Hygieia is in Gene Key 64. These are such powerful keys, these Virgo keys. Um, and, and the city of illumination. And then we have Mars uh, and, and the midheaven for this chart, where I am today, uh, is the transfiguration. This is my life work key. It's nearly my birthday. <laughs> so <laughs> looking forward to that and uh, having some kind of, uh, no doubt, transformative experience that uh, follows you around when you have 47 as your life work but as you can see you know complementing if you like um you know complementing astraea crossing the galactic center um we have this huge capacity for inner light opening up at the moment and that may mean being with um, the inner shadows, the inner darkness. You know, usually we're not going to hit the light while we're still trying to escape and avoid. Um, if it's one thing I've learned about this 47th gene key, which with the gift of transfiguration and um, 
the city of trans sorry gift of transmutation which is if you like a smaller process where every time the shadow comes you embrace it but you not only embrace your shadow you embrace the shadow of the collective you know you embrace the shadow of the people around you and and that can be really tough i mean it, it does force you to really go deeply into this idea of um love your neighbor um yeah and and also i think it's keying into um palace athena and neptune i talked about this last week these are really strong bodhisattva initiation energies across gene key 22 which is grace and um and gene key 36 compassion so this is a very powerful stuff at the moment going on um yeah but we it feels like that all this kind of maybe new age light and fluffy um understanding of compassion maybe wanting to be compassionate but kind of being a bit in denial really um we're having to go deeper you know you have we're having to kind of really process um anger and and difficult feelings it's like there's nowhere to hide anymore and, and maybe that's part of this um, resensitization process is actually when we have all these emotions and we've been burying them um, even when we thought we weren't burying them there, there seems to be more coming to the surface at the moment talking to other friends and people there's just a, a lot going on and and we should bear in mind also actually um that all the outer planets and chiron are still retrograde at the moment until early october so there is a lot of digging in the dirt going on like every single um, outer planet you know and that is all about collective shadows that we are seeing um, awakening at the moment but the goddesses always seem to me to offer positive doorways you know to say follow the, they're like they're like guides and with the lantern saying follow me and and you'll find something positive coming out of of what is chaotic and negative so i'm going to end today um just talking about um we can see here that venus is conjunct vesta at the moment vesta is the priestess she's about the use of intention to create she's about finding our inner authority our own relationship to god goddess um, not through a priest or through a religion but actually through our own experience of um, of love of um, mercy of grace you know these experiences can come in so many ways um, and where they are today is in gene key 57 this is one that relates to the ajna center to um and and the the city of it is clarity so when we have that kind of boom clarity uh you know it's it's kind of really amazing um yeah and i'm just noticing there in a quincunx relationship here also with uranus um at the moment and uranus is that breaking free energy so we may well have some flashes of clarity uh and and what this is saying to us is to honor the divine feminine to to honor our own creative process and to use intention ceremony to to create what we would like for the future 
you know, the future, um, at the same time, I'm full of contradictions and paradoxes, because at the same time, we have no control over this golden age and its coming, and yet part of our whole human history is that we use ceremony. Um, firstly, we use it to honour things. We use it to show gratitude for things. Um, and we know through law of attraction that what we show gratitude for is what we continue to create. So, um, you know, the, this actually points to us having co-creative power and having some control over what happens. Um, but only, in, I think, in the sense that we may align ourselves to the highest possible outcome. We can't stop this change um, into a new golden age. Um, I just wanted to say a few words about what I feel the golden age is. Um, because it's linked to Aquarian energies. So this is all about um, the end of hierarchy. It's about gender equality. It's about equality of all people, actually. Um, begins with gender equality, but, you know, its roots go into, um, you know, the persecution of many people, whether it's because they're black or they're gay or um, they're, in, they're indigenous people. You know, it, it all begins actually from the same very deep premise and from, you know, we've talked about Asherah, from the removal of Asherah and the divine goddess from the matrix of equality, what we go into is a really problematic, corrupt program. So what we're trying to do now is correct the program by honouring this equality and this comes to fruition in the age of Aquarius and I'm not saying that's around the corner because these golden ages open and close very slowly um, so you know I have heard it said that Aquarian age was opening since the enlightenment and there's that feels like there's truth in that for me so um you know, but we can see in our age, just I was thinking about the Olympics, actually, like how, you know, that's a global event. So we can all feel part of that, hopefully. And, you know, things like the BMX um, riding has been uh, a really a major event for women this year. And you can see all different kinds of sports that women are doing now that they weren't doing in the past. There's much more of an equalizing on that, even on that physical level of male and female um, ability. Um, yeah, so, you know, there's there's lots of ways we can see um, equality happening but also then there's always going to be a polarization against that there'll be people who really don't want it to happen and who will do everything in their power to stop it happening and unfortunately a lot of them are in governments <laughs> around the world so um, but the program is going to, you know, the that's the thing about it's not really in our control. That's where it's good because um, gradually things will change. You know, the civilization, the civilization we're in, will fall, and that can be really quite scary as well as liberating. So we um, we're in this very intense period now. And another way of looking at it, which um, uh, if you look on my YouTube channel, I've been doing these really wonderful podcasts with Katrini Matisse, who um, lives in Russia and she is a Gene Keys ambassador. And she also knows a huge amount about human design. So we've been looking at the wheel of... Um, human design and, and looking at what's going to happen 
in 2027 when we change from the cross of planning which is a really yang energy you know it's the industrial age is is this cross of planning the last 600 years and we're right here in the last six years of this you know really kind of intense crazy time um, and we're moving towards the cross of the sleeping phoenix so I don't know exactly what that's going to look like, but when I feel into it, it's very yin. <laughs> Basically, you know, Sleeping Phoenix feels very yin to me. So I feel like these goddess asteroids are, are kind of helping us prepare in a more detailed way um, for that coming along. So... Um, so yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this week's transmission. Uh, I am going to be uh, on holiday next week for my birthday. So I'll have to see. I'm going to Snowdonia Mountain, which I absolutely love. Um, so if I have some Wi-Fi and the inclination, I, I will do one next week. But this may be it for two weeks. So namaste, go in peace, have a wonderful journey with the goddess asteroids. Bye.